Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in last tutorial, uh, that means part 3 of MD simulation tutorial, we learned that a periodic boundary condition is needed to create a large or realistic system. Okay. And in periodic boundary condition, we replicate the simulation box in all direction of the original simulation box. And therefore, the image copy of the central simulation box surround the central simulation box or central particle. Okay. But the implementation of the periodic boundary condition may lead to some problem. For example, we may generate a situation in which a certain atom interact with image copy of itself or with several image copy of another atom. That means suppose uh, this particle or this atom, okay, so it is present in the central simulation box and this is the image copy of that atom, okay. So this atom may interact with this atom through Van der Waal or other non-bonded interaction, okay. And also with the image copy of other atom, like it may, this is, this is the second atom, it may interact with this first atom and also this atom may interact with the image copy of this atom in different simulation box, this image copy, this image copy, this image copy. And we do not want this situation, okay. So therefore, minimum image convention that means a condition or method is needed to avoid this situation. And this minimum image convention method makes sure that each atom interact with only one image of every other atom in the system. So therefore, we have to set a grid or area surrounding each atom within which the interaction will only occur. So, this is the area or grid of this atom, okay. So, it is a cutoff and to ensure this, the size of the radius of this grid should not exceed the half the size of box when considering a cubic box or suppose this is a, a spherical grid. So, the radius of this grid should not exceed half the size of the simulation box, okay. So, it is a cutoff beyond which the interaction do not occur. Now, the atoms which are present within this cutoff range, that means within this grid box of a particular atom. So, this atom, these atoms are the neighbor of this atom, okay. Therefore, for each atom, there is a neighbor list at particular time. Suppose in one particular time point, these atoms are the neighbor of this atom. But during simulation, you know, the atom moves, they change their position. So, their neighbors also changes. Therefore, we also have to update or change the neighbor list periodically because the neighbor changes with each time step, okay. And to prepare this neighbor list of particular atom or for all atoms or to update this list, a violet cutoff scheme is used. And please do not confuse it with the violet algorithm for numerical integration, okay. This is different. Now, in each time step, the position of this atom may change. Therefore, we have to update this neighbor list in each time step also. And to avoid this neighbor list update in each time step, Violet cutoff scheme uses a buffer area. That means a zone slightly larger than the cutoff distance to capture nearby atom that might move into the cutoff region within a few steps. Okay, so this is the buffer area. Suppose this is the atom which is present in the buffer region. So it may enter into this cutoff region. Okay, and this is known as violet buffer tolerance. The cutoff of the interaction is also required to speed up the calculation or uh, the speed of MD simulation. 
So in part one of MD simulation tutorial, I explain a different sources of uh, potential energy uh, like bonded and non-bonded interaction. Okay, and you know the bond angle dihedral. These are the bonded interaction and Van der Waals and electrostatic. These are the non-bonded interaction. Okay, but this bond angle dihedral and sometimes the Van der Waal interaction. They are actually short range interaction. That means interaction range is short. Okay. And the atoms which are present within 0 0.5 nanometer, that means 5 angstrom, usually the interaction occurs when the atoms are present within this range. But in case of electrostatic interaction, it's long range interaction. That means it can the oppositely charged atom may interact or attract each other beyond the distance of 1 nanometer or 10 Armstrong. Okay. Therefore, more atoms comes within the range of electrostatic interaction. So, more computational power is required to calculate electrostatic interaction. Okay. Therefore, to deal with this long range interaction, we insert a cutoff radius beyond which the interaction will not be calculated by direct method or Coulombic summation. Because you know Coulombic summation is used to calculate the potential energy from electrostatic interaction. But we use this cutoff that means a distance up to 1 or 1 1.2 nanometer. Up to this distance the electrostatic interaction or potential energy gain from electrostatic interaction is calculated directly through Coulombic summation. Okay. But beyond this range, outside of this range, a theoretical uh, procedure is used which is known as Ewald summation which is used to calculate the potential energy from electrostatic interaction beyond this cutoff range. So that is why for calculating the electrostatic interaction, we use the method which is known as particle mesh wall. This is the method which is used to calculate potential energy gain from electrostatic interaction. So, these are the few important concepts uh, which we should know and it is particularly important to set up the MD simulation parameter and these parameters are incorporated in a file which is known as .mdp file, the file with extension .mdp that means molecular dynamics parameter which are used in MD simulation uh, using Gromax. Okay. So that is all for this tutorial. In next tutorial, I will be explaining few other concepts of molecular dynamics simulation. Thank you. Thank you for watching.